To practice the exercise 4.14 power 2, we have to write a method named power 2. So we'll have a public static void for now, power 2 parameters, and we have our header completed. It accepts a real number base and integer exponent as parameters, and then it's going to return the base raised to our given power. So we know we need to take two things, and we're shown this right here. We're gonna have an int b for base. I'll just write this whole thing out. It's good practice to write everything out. We're also going to have int power. This should actually be a double as well since we're dealing with doubles, not just an int. Now, um, we are going to want to basically make a math.pow without using math.pow. We need to accept um, real numbers, or uh, sorry, we need to accept positive and negative exponents. And that's important because we're going to have to add a little bit more than the previous just POW exercise to make this work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make a for loop. And this is going to run for the entire length of this power because that's how many times this needs to run. We can show this as an example. If we have like 8 raised to the power of 4, it's going to do 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, which will give us this value. So we're going to have a for loop. We're going to have int a is equal to zero. And then we're going to run this as long as a is less than our power. But remember, power can be negative. Even if it's negative or positive, we need to run it this many times. So what we can do is math.abs, which stands for absolute value, will pass in power, and this will give us the absolute power, power of the absolute value, which is the positive of it. We're then going to do a plus plus, and then we're going to be inside of this for loop. Inside of this for loop, we need to store the value that we are going to be uh, multiplying every single time. We can't be multiplying into our base. So we're going to do int, and we can do, we'll just say total, and we'll set it equal to 1 for now. And then in our for loop, we are going to have a total times equals, and then we're going to multiply in our base into here. So we have basically 1 times our base, and that's for the zeroth time. And then we're going to do it for the first time, second time, third time. And then if we end at the fourth time, like we did here, we would get this value. So that's it for our math.pow. Uh, that's it for power two, if we only had to deal with positives. Since we have to deal with negatives, though, and negatives mean basically we have one over our answer. All we need to do is say if our power is less than zero, we are going to be inside of here. So if our power is less than zero, that means total is going to be equal to one over our total, or we can just say divides equal to one. We can end this, and that's it for this method. We can then return the total at the end, close off our function, and we have an incompatible type. That's because we're trying to return a double, but this should be a double, not a void. I put it as void. That's how I usually start my methods until I know I need to return something. I know I need to return a double, so now we're returning a double. This should not be an int since we need to return a double. And this is important. We are going to make total a double. So we can click submit. And now that everything's perfect, we can see that we have not passed all the tests because this is incorrect. Um, it seems like this is incorrect because of what we have right here. Divides equal, I guess it doesn't work correctly. So if you just do total is equal to one divided by the total, and try it again. We'll pass 11 out of 11 test. So it's a little bit weird. I know you can do like times equals or like plus equals or minus equals, but I guess divide equals is a little bit weird. So that is how we would get our answer. And we have completed all of this. This is the code to solve exercise 4.14.